Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang, notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chat channel donations. The Venmo and the Patreon family, we working. Now, a bunch of you guys hit hit me up yesterday, wanted me to give my thoughts regarding Demetrius Andrade. Allegedly, he's pulled out of a middleweight scrap with Sergey Derivinchenko. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his, his name accurately, but it's a ranked middleweight. They're talking about making a fight December 16th, and according to Team Derivinchenko, they're saying they were deep in negotiations with Andre to make the fight come off on the David Lemieux, Billy Joe Saunders card in, in Quebec. And it was almost finalized last minute, I guess. Um, team Derevinchenko is alleging that Andre, he pulled out, said, nah, I don't have enough time to uh, prepare properly for it. So I want to get my thoughts. To me, it's, it's disappointing if this is in fact true. I definitely want to hear a response from Demetrius Andre. However, I will say this, it's kind of like the boy who cried wolf. To me, as talented as Andrade is, he has like in his his jacket, his his uh, rap sheet, he has a history of similar types of things like this. For one reason or another, the fights aren't getting made, like him and Edislandi Lada. I'm like, okay, maybe it's Lada's side that doesn't want it. But what about Jermel Charlo? I remember on the Amir Khan versus Devin Alexander card in a December, it was December of whatever year it was, they had scheduled Demetrius Andrade and Jermail Charlo to fight each other, right? Way back when. So Amir Khan fought Devin Alexander a long time ago. And they even did like promotional Showtime um, promo posters and like little trailers. And it had the, it said Charlo versus Andrade, right? Andre, who had been fighting on HBO, was going to come over to Showtime for that particular fight. But then something comes up where Andre pulls out. He's not content with the money. He's like, man, I'm going over, leaving HBO, coming over to Showtime to fight a quote unquote house fighter and the money ain't looking right. Right. So it's just these these random little um, situations that come up where it's just like it, it, it's like the boy who cried wolf. It makes you question Andrade's managerial team it makes you question his, his promoter like why is it so hard for him to get these various opportunities because this would have been a good look middleweight division is popping and HBO the HBO side of things has majority of the, the top middleweights Canelo Triple G Danny Jacobs just fought right there's Luis Cuba Adias there's uh, Demetrius Andrade who fought on HBO recently they have Billy Joe Saunders David Lemieux you know what I mean? So th this could be like kind of a round robin type of affair. And then you have this uh, Sergey Derevinchenko guy and he's ranked. And I watched his last fight with Toriano Johnson and he stopped Toriano Johnson. Like Johnson, okay, he has some inactivity and whatnot, but that's a solid win for him. And if I'm not mistaken, he's the IBF mandatory for Golovkin. And he's an undefeated guy. 11-0 um, and 0 with 9 knockouts so as of right now from what we've seen that's a solid resume so this could have been a good fight and the, the problem with Andre that I've noticed is for whatever reason his team or him they aren't giving him the chance to gain any kind of forward progress and ride the wave or momentum like he just fought he just fought against uh Alan Tez Fox did his thing, hurt him in the first round. Fox seemed gun shy. Fox was a guy who was who was kind of bigger than him, taller than him, and couldn't do nothing with him. It was on the card for um, Jezreel Corrales and Machado, right? On HBO, little smaller card in New York. He fought, didn't didn't receive any injuries or sustain any real damage that I seen. First fight at middleweight, he did his thing. And then now they try to throw you back in into the the middleweight pit December 16th, and 
according to Team Derevchenko, they're saying you you were agreed, the money was in place, the deal, the go, the car, the date, and it would have given you if you knew you were going to fight, you could have started training, and it was seven weeks prior to the date, so you had plenty of time. But as the negotiation stretch is getting closer and closer, so how are you not ready? You know what I mean? And I, I feel like fighters at some point they have to you're gonna have to get some kind of risk we always hear andre and i like andre i've interviewed him several times cool dude things like that very skilled representing the usa in the olympics but i also am transparent with my audience and, and call it how i see it and keep it a buck and the thing is sometimes you have to take risk and like you look at like let's say mikey garcia he dealt with shit in his career where he was on the sidelines right on the sidelines not getting fights beefing with top rank but when he came back he fought Elias Rojas then he dropped down to 35 he was flexible fought a champion who was a power punching champion De, uh, Dejan's Latitian and knocked him out brutally then he moved back up in weight to fight Adrian Broner you see so he's he's been flexible with the weight he could fight at he's open to options from Golden Boy or from Richard Schaefer Mayweather, you know what I'm saying? He's just taking it all in and trying to get his career back on track. Same thing with Andre Ward. Andre Ward, he had to deal with um, the late Dan Goosen. And he got bought out of that situation by Rock Nation. Moved on. But he, he got his career cracking. Moved up in weight. Did a multi-fight deal with HBO. Fought Sullivan Brer when he was undefeated. And we just seen Sullivan Brer fight on the Kovalev Shabransky card. And we see how good he is ever since the Ward loss, right? Ward took that as his first fight. A power puncher, guy who's bigger than him, his first fight at the full light heavyweight. To me, that's a risk, you know what I mean? And then after he took Alexander Brandt, and then next he's fighting Kovalev. So you, you got to take some kind of risk. And not everything's going to be peachy keen and, and move as precise and pristine as you would like. But... I just feel like, for whatever reason, Demetrius Andrade has struggled career-wise to gain any kind of substantial momentum where he's fighting multiple times a year and his name is just buzzing. Like, I thought, for example, um, when he fought Willie Nelson, I thought he looked extremely good in that fight. That was a very good fight. And then it's like the buzz dies down off of that performance. And then you fight Jack Kukule, don't really look the same. And then you wait a little bit, you move up, and announce you're moving to middleweight. Fight Alan Tess Fox, which was, you know, what I mean, it was a low, like, like a low level card. And now you have this opportunity to fight again, get some activity, so you're not rusty. And now, according to Dara Vinchenko, you're not doing that. And you could be, you said you want to fight the David Lemieux and get to the Golovkins and stuff like that. This is a direct route to do that. So to me, you, like I said, you got to take some kind of risk at some point. And to me, it's, it's sad if, if, if you really think about it. It's sad because there's been a lot of great fighters. Like, let's say Yuri York is Gamboa. Gamboa doesn't look the same to me. I don't think he beat Jason Sosa last weekend. I thought I had Jason Sosa winning, but I could watch it again if, if there's controversy. I didn't. He got knocked down. I don't think he won the fight. You know what I mean? But when he was with 50 Cent or whatever, his career was very stagnant. He wasn't really, he wasn't getting the type of fights that he needed to to be ready at all times. And they threw him in there with a monster like Crawford and it just wasn't a good look. And that's kind of what I'm seeing shades of that with Andre. No, he hasn't been stopped or lost like uh, Gamboa did. However, it's just bad decision making to me. Like for example, like the Jamel Charlo. Charles went on to do some pretty good things for his career. He's a champion now. He's, he's off back-to-back -back good knockouts. So even earlier in his career, if you would have fought him and beat him, then that would have been a good name, especially if he would have later went on to beat Charles Hatley, knock out Erickson Lubin. You know what I mean? You could have had that body, and you could be building for a Jamal Charlo. Let the, the, big, the bigger, taller twin try to avenge the loss. You know what I'm saying? So there's, there's so many ways. You got Danny Jacobs. You have Canelo Triple G, which we don't know if it's going to happen next. You have the main event that they were trying to put him on, Saunders Lemieux. That's a championship fight. You know what I mean? There's a lot of different options. 
And to me, they're just with with Andre's career is between inactivity and fight pullouts and stuff like that. He's not sustaining any type of real type of motivation. It's kind of like a person who who has a job for small periods of time. It's kind of hard to save your money when when you're you're keeping a job for two months and then you quit. You know what I'm saying? And then you have to you're unemployed, burning the little money you have in savings. And then you're like, OK, I got to get another job. And then you get another job. And then you get that job for three, four months, and then you quit that. You know what I mean? It's hard to do that. But the people who have had jobs and, and kept a job for a year plus, two years, and you know what I mean, invested in the 401k and saved, that's how that's how you really create a savings. But basically, it's like stop and go traffic. You know what I mean? It's much easier to get to your destination if you go straight through instead of like stop, go, stop, go. You know what I mean? You, you, you drive half a mile then have to stop for five minutes drive a little bit and then stop and that's kind of how um andre's career has been to me lately and it, it, like i said it's sad because andre is is a quality fighter he's charismatic you know what i mean clean cut looking dude and he has all the tools to to be bigger but he's actually getting passed up on and like i, I don't know maybe he should have signed with al Heyman or something and a promoter that could could handle what I feel his skill and what he was trying to do because like you look at it look at everybody look at all of his contemporaries and I, I'm not the type of person to be in another man's pocket but if you think about it all of his contemporaries people in and around his division around the same age and things like that they're all making more money than 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 he probably is you know what I mean like the Charlos what they're getting for Julian J Rock Williams and Erickson Lubin I'm pretty sure it's probably more than what he was getting for Alan Tez Fox. You know what I'm saying? So the risk has to come at some point. You know what I mean? And, it, and like I said, it's sad because these are decisions that, that you make. You know what I mean? Sean Porter, when he fought against Adrian Granado, so I'm sure he got a pretty penny to, to make that fight. You know what I mean? Because he did take some risk there. That's what, back to what I was saying with the risk. Sean Porter is ranked number one or two with the WBC, he could have easily sat out and been like, oh, I'll see what, what opportunities present themselves in 2018. But he got back in there and actually got injured in his fight with Granados. So, you know what I mean? That was something he wouldn't have to do if he didn't fight Granados, who's a tough customer. You know what I mean? And like, what if he would have lost that fight because he got injured? Then he would have lost his ranking with the WBC. So once again, it's a risk. He didn't, he took the opportunity, got the payday, um, held it together, beat Granado, and now he can rest up. And then in 2018, he can um, he can fight. He can fight. Um, for, hopefully for a big name. So that that's just kind of my thoughts on the whole situation. And I, I don't know. I don't know what it is with with Andre, but it's just it's not a good look with the pullouts, especially as vocal as he is and calling. Canelo names and this and that, you know what I'm saying? And calling out good luck and saying he wants the, the David Lemuse and the biggest fight. These are channels and avenues to get to <clears throat> what you're saying you want. You got to take them. Let me know what you think. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. Make sure you smash the like button. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.